Thanks for watching. And today I want to show you a very neat way of integrating a function using a linear using linear algebra. More precisely, what we want to do, we want to integrate e to the ax cosine bx dx. And you will probably object there are easier methods to doing so, like you know, considering e ax i bx or something. But what I really want to show you is how linear algebra makes things a bit neater. So, in particular, consider the following vector space. Let W be the span of e to the ax cosine bx and its cousin e to the ax sine bx. This is one thing, it's a subspace if you want of continuous function or differentiable functions. And in particular, let's consider the differentiation operator. So let t of f be just f prime. And now, here's an important thing. If I give you a subspace and a linear transformation t, it's not true in general that if you apply t of this vector, it's still in the same space. But it turns out that this space W is in fact invariant under T. And in particular, to show that, let's consider T of e to the ax cosine of bx. Well, that's just the, def no, that's the derivative of this. So e to the ax cosine of bx prime. And so this becomes by the product rule a e to the ax cosine of bx and differentiate this so minus b e to the ax sine of bx. And let's just do the same spiel with e to the ax sine of bx. Well, it's just a derivative of e to the ax sine of bx prime, and that becomes again a e to the ax cosine, I guess, sine of bx plus uh, b e to the ax cosine of bx. And let me just rewrite this because we want to find a matrix actually. So that's b e to the ax cosine of bx plus a e to the ax sine of bx. So what have we found? We found that in fact, if you apply t to those two basis vectors, e to the ax cosine of bx, it's still a linear combination of those basis vectors. And moreover, the cool thing is we can find a matrix of T. Therefore, what we get is the matrix of T Again, strictly speaking, the matrix of T restricted to that subspace with respect to that basis given for W. So the, which I'll just abbreviate as the matrix of T is the following. Let's call this A. And again, to find the matrix, you just evaluate T at the basis vectors and you gather the coefficients. So here I erased it, but I believe it was um, A minus B. And here, remember, it was t applied to the second vector, so the coefficients is just b and a. All right, what does that tell you? It really tells you that t applied to e to the ax cosine of bx and e to the ax sine of bx equals to ab minus ba 
e to the ax cosine of bx, e to the ax sine of bx, Okay, in other words, and here comes an important point, you have this space W, this space W, you have T, which is the same thing as A, which is the same thing as differentiation, okay? And now what we wanna do, we wanna anti-differentiate, which is the reverse process. So really, what we wanna do, so anti-differentiate, which is, again, it's the reverse process, which is the inverse of t, and which is given by the inverse of the matrix A. So what does that tell us? It tells us, in fact, maybe that's step three, and here comes a neat thing. So our answer here, right, Integral of e to the ax cosine of bx dx and integral of e to the ax sine of bx dx is just given by a inverse of our vectors ax cosine of bx e to the ax sine of bx but now we have our matrix here. A, let me write this and then erase it. So AB minus BA. So that was A. Now to find A inverse. Since it's two by two, it's not bad. So it's one over the determinant which is 1 over a squared plus b squared. And then you interchange the two things, a and a, and minus bb. So what you're left with, that becomes, again, 1 over a squared plus b squared, a minus bba of e to the ax cosine of bx, e to the ax sine of bx. Now, all we need to do is just multiply everything. So going back here, we get, if you want, 1 over a squared plus b squared. And so a e to the ax cosine of bx minus b e to the ax sine of bx b e to the ax cosine of bx plus a e to the ax sine of bx and we're basically done it's the same thing but with a squared plus b squared, let's put this here, Oof. I know it's all over the place, so, so it becomes a over a squared plus b squared, e to the ax cosine of bx, minus b over a squared plus b squared, e to the ax sine of bx, and b over a squared plus b squared e to the ax cosine of bx plus a over a squared plus b squared e to the ax sine of bx. And ta-da! What does that give you? It gives you the integrals of this is the integral of e to the ax uh, cosine of bx dx. I did not forget about the constants, right? So it's plus c1, I guess plus c2. And this is integral of e to the ax sine of bx dx. How cool is 
that? We didn't use any complex analysis. We didn't use any, you know, integration by parts. We used purely linear algebra. And you may ask, what is the scope of this method? Were we lucky in this case? And we sort of were because um, it turns out this method only works if you can solve x prime equals to ax. And the reason was this is sort of like t applied to the vector x. And we needed to make sure that if you differentiated every vector, it's still a linear combination of the vectors in that basis. And that would only happen if, in fact, you can solve tx equals to ax, which gives you x prime equals to ax. And at least in the constant coefficient case, it just gives you linear combinations of exponentials and trig and maybe with some powers of t attached. So it is pretty cool, you know, mind-blowing, but it doesn't always work. But still, I love linear algebra, and I think this just shows you how awesome it is. All right, and that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and, you know, if you like this and want more linear algebra, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.